pulse response is the received waveform you get with a transmitted pulse that's rectangular in shape and exactly one symbol interval in duration, also sometimes called a baud interval or a unit interval. Now sampling the channel's pulse response at the symbol rate, as shown with the blue dots here, highlights the magnitude of the intersymbol interference. So the main cursor is the one around the main peak of the channel's pulse response. Samples preceding the main cursor are called precursor ISI terms. Those following the main cursor are postcursor ISI terms. For a given data rate, as we go from channels with low loss to higher and higher loss at Nyquist, we're going to see a stronger and stronger low pass filtering effect on the pulse response. It's going to become more and more spread out in time, and that's going to give rise to more and more ISI. So, for example, here, this MR type channel, you might see intersymbol interference spanning 10 or so unit intervals but going to long reach channels, that may increase up to 20 or more unit intervals. Moreover, higher data rates over the same channel has a very similar effect because you'll then see a higher and higher Nyquist frequency and therefore more and more loss at Nyquist and hence more and more ISI. For example, here's what the uh, response of a channel looks like at a certain symbol interval, 100 picoseconds in this example, you can still clearly see the ones and zeros at the received end of the channel. But if we increase the data rate so that the unit interval shrinks by a factor of four, then we start seeing the ones and zeros start smearing together more and more, and it becomes harder and harder to distinguish them. Again, you can imagine with a little bit of noise added on top, it might become quite difficult. Now, there are other types of signal integrity impairments besides skin effect and dielectric losses. Importantly, there are discontinuities in the interconnect between chips. They can't be made perfect transmission lines. For example, here we take a close look at the package interconnect that gets you from the CMOS die down to the printed circuit board underneath. There's a series of discontinuities, solder balls of various sizes, vias drilled through the package substrate, traces along the package substrate. So through all this interconnect, it's impossible to perfectly maintain the characteristic impedance of the link. And as a result, you disrupt the signal flow and that gives rise to reflections and additional ISI terms. The worst case with respect to reflections is sometimes, in fact, over short distances where the reflections are not attenuated by skin effect and dielectric losses in the intervening channel. So for example, here's a simple channel model where we've got a transmitter source impedance, RTX, and then a series of discontinuities that arise because of the inductance of bumps and vias through the package, as well as the capacitances associated with pads and ESD protection circuits. You have similar discontinuities at the receiver. And if there's only a very sh short trace in between, then these discontinuities can give rise to reflections that are not at all attenuated and show up in the pulse response. Problematically, add some significant delay compared to the main cursor, making them more difficult to equalize, as we'll see. Additional signal integrity impairments arise from various sources of noise in the link. So these include crosstalk from neighboring channels, thermal and other sources of noise in the transceiver amplifiers themselves at either end of the link. And then you've also got noise on the clocks used to generate and sample the waveforms, also called jitter. So we can see the impacts of all of these noise and jitter sources by looking at many subsequent traces of different data patterns superimposed on top of each other. So for example, here if we're first showing just three traces with noise going from low to high, another one going from high to low to high to low, and so on. As we start adding more different data patterns, here we've got seven, they start combining to form this characteristic eye pattern. And if we repeat this many, many times, in this case, 1,000 traces, we start getting a feel for the resulting noise and timing margin by looking at the opening inside this I-shaped 
pattern.